Well, I hope that the girls did a good job. Well, we'll see about that. This morning, Eric Shuto comes to harvest the fruits of his labor from those he calls his daughters. For the past 10 days, his 600,000 bees have been gathering the flowers of rapeseed, clover, and cornflower. Here we go. This one's a bit warm. Yes, there's not much. If the first beehive is empty, we hope that this one worked well. The second is full of honey. This one is magnificent because you can already see the white wax, freshly pulled wax. You can tell they've harvested. Here, go ahead. You can put your finger in if you like. Taste. The first harvest is good. About a 40 kilos of honey. It's delicious. Really, it's superb. This is Hawthorne rapeseed, isn't it? A beekeeper since the age of 16, Eric was chosen to install some 30 beehives on the heights of Fontevraud Abbey, a timeless monastic city. We really appreciate the serenity here. It's calm, it's pleasant, it makes you feel good. I think the bees feel good too. Since its foundation in 1101 in the heart of the Loire Valley, Fontevraud has lived many lives. For seven centuries, the abbey has been inhabited by nuns, women monks. Its cloister, measuring 3,600 square meters, is one of the largest in the world. In 1804, Napoleon transformed it into a prison renowned as one of the harshest detention centers in France. It housed prisoners until 1985. When the prison closed, the abbey could have fallen into ruin. But four years ago, 20 million euros were invested to give this old lady a new lease of life. The French government, owner of the site, has taken up the tourism challenge. There it is, yes it is. The Leroux and Courtois families are Parisians. Ah well, he doesn't know how, you see, you should have done it. They took a week's vacation to tour the Chateau of the Loire Valley. Fontevrault is their last stop. Admission is 11 euros. The Abbey was the refuge of Eleanor of Aquitaine. Eleanor of Aquitaine. Queen of France and England. She rests here with her husband, Henri II, and their son, Richard the Lionheart. Beyond the tombs and old stones, children are drawn to an attraction at the entrance to the church. The clouds in the house. The management has invested 100,000 euros in this digital table. Pierre, 10 years old, can draw. Very nice, very realistic. Color and see his egg projected 10 meters by 5 onto the walls of the nave. You'll never actually visit the abbey. Now we're in trouble. Salome come back for you? Yeah, yeah. To attract this family audience, who wouldn't necessarily stop off at the abbey, Fontevraud has decided to capitalize on new technologies. It's recording, so whenever you want, you can start. Me, Robert d'Arbrissel. All my life I've done nothing but follow our Lord. Robert d'Arbrissel, founder of the Abbey, is coming back to life in the guise of this actor. All together. Four cameras film him. To create the director's new toy, Antoine Godbert. To the forest of Crans. He commissioned the company to create a hologram. We're about to see it set up. This process will enable the public to see Robert d'Arbrissel suspended in the air at the entrance to the abbey. The character will be diverted so that the background is no longer visible. So he'll be able to descend to the... I'll go down. Investment cost, 
50,000 euros. Plus, I think the 3D effect will be generated by diverting it. The pyramid will be 2 meters 40, so we'll have a life-size dark cell. This reincarnation of the Order's founder, I think, will fascinate people. I, Robert Darbrissel. To this new, more modern image, Fontevraud hopes to pass the 200,000 admissions mark next year, a million and a half euros in revenue. This will be enough to finance part of the colossal amount spent on maintaining the estate. Just for the four hectares of roofing, 300,000 euros per year. Over the next four years, 20 million euros of work is planned. To reduce the bill a little, Stéphane and Thierry, the Abbey's little hands, have to redouble their ingenuity. Is it good for you? Allez, on and go. With this funny ball, they're going to strip the four domes of the Abbey church at a height of 30 meters. It's a helium-filled balloon covered with gardener's netting for protection. We'll try to rub along the dome to pick up as many webs as possible. In the past, we had to bring in a crane and close the church to the public. A cost of several thousand euros. The balloon and its net will scrape away the cobwebs. Well, we remove them. If you got a high ceiling like that. Would you use this at home, ma'am? It's a bit high, though. Fortunately, my place isn't as high. After more than an hour of walking back and forth among the tombs... The thing is, strangely, it doesn't go straight up. The four domes are almost clean. What would be nice? If there was a spider's web. A beautiful spider's web that you can see from below, but which takes on proportions like everything else. Everything is gigantic. So your technique is effective? Effective? I don't mean totally effective, but it does take a lot of the edge off. Second mission of the day, cleaning the Abbey Church's 47 stained glass windows. To get there, this old staircase. During the prison period, the first floor of the church served as a dormitory for the inmates. The stones still bear the scars of this period. We see graphs of former inmates, obviously, with dates, names. Declarations of love, too. I think it's Marjorie. I love you. Here, there's a date, the 15th of June, 48, obviously. Bellard. About? Rather than call in a specialized firm? Put on your visor a little. Thierry cleans the stained glass windows himself, suspended 20 meters from the ground. This is Jesus. Is Jesus clean there? I think it's fine. More than just a place to visit. The aim is to make Fontevraud a high-end tourist complex. Four years ago, the leper infirmary and the former nun's dormitory were transformed into four-star hotels. The Courtois family, four people, two adults, two children. Double room six booked for one night. That's right. For 180 euros a night, the Courtois and the Leroux will enjoy the peace and quiet of the place. Yes, it's always duplex, it's huge. In their two-story suite, a far cry from the Spartan comforts enjoyed by the nuns. Oh, the view. But above all, families will have VIP access to the Abbey. At Vespers time, the last visitors and employees leave the premises. We go straight to the saddleback roof. The Leroux and the Courtois can wander alone. In the estate's 13 hectares, this is one of the privileges of hotel guests. 
Fontevraud is the only historic monument in France open 24 hours a day. Right, let's go down to the chapter house. For an extra 100 euros, the family has hired a guide. Antoine Fon, Fontevraud specialist. These paintings are there to explain to the nuns why they are there. They are teaching AIDS. In this room, the women monks made all the community's decisions. The nuns arranged themselves in order. At night, a different atmosphere emerges. I find that there's a mystical side to all this visiting, so it's incredible. It's a real opportunity. The hotel and the night tours brought in just over a million dollars. Just over a million euros last year. And to attract even more visitors, Fontevraud Road has called on a rising star in the world of gastronomy. Thibault Ruggieri, 36 years old, winner of the Bocas d'Or, the world's most prestigious cooking competition. The management gave him carte blanche to create a restaurant in the Abbey. How are you? Well, how about you? Impeccable. His first major project is to set up an organic vegetable garden to supply his kitchens. He comes there every morning. I'm going to prune a lot of the chai flowers. Adele, the Abbey's market gardener, provides her with herbs. Shall we have some arugula too? And some 20 varieties of vegetables. The beans? Ultra fresh produce. Thibaut Ruggieri could have worked in any of the big houses. He chose Fontevro out of conviction. I really liked working for a company where you're not fighting to generate maximum sales. We have the same constraints as a private company, but the ultimate goal is to bring to life and maintain a cultural heritage, which without this financial windfall would perhaps have more difficulties. To install its kitchen in this 9th century old building, listed as a historic monument. Here are the sprouts and I'll bring back the beans. The chef had to adapt. No gas for his ovens, which run on electricity. And no work to modify the room permanently. So you see, we've really preserved the vaulted ceiling and all the partitions are really glued to the stone, which can be removed if need be, recovering the original look. It really does make for an exceptional, in the truest sense of the word, A cache that attracts a wealthy clientele. On this particular day, members of a British luxury car club took over the hotel and part of the restaurant. They are greeted by Charlotte, in charge of events at the Abbey. It's the first time and it's superb. It just goes to show how powerful religious orders. Charlotte worked in the luxury hotel industry in Mexico. She was specifically hired to develop business tourism. Since her arrival, barely a year ago, an event like this is organized every other day. British guests will dine in the small refectory the nun's former canteen. Room and board rates for 29 people. 5,800 euros. What are you checking, Charlotte? Make sure that all is clean, that it's well laid out, the last details, that there's nothing. Askew, we just want it to be perfect. We just want them to come back every year. And it's perfect. A Fontevraud? The chef's meal always begins with a nod to the history of the place. So here we have a bread. Cooked Melba with a little clarified butter. We've prepared a carrot velouté that we're going to pour like this. Nuns and prisoners alike systematically ate soup, broth and soup with bread, sliced several hours in advance. So it was logical to deduce that this bread had to be dry. And so I said to myself, well, the soup is dry bread. In the dining room, Charlotte checks that Thibaut Ruggieri's creativity is working. 
That was great. Great meal. For the rest of the dinner, the vegetable garden revolution. A plate of vegetables that changes every day according to the harvest. Pinta of beans and moral vinegar. And for dessert, delicious apples and crunchy cookies. I demand two revolutions in front of two mushrooms. Do you have time to do them right now or not? Last year, his cuisine earned Thibaut Ruggieri, his first Michelin star. A refinement, a thousand miles from what? The last inhabitants of Fontevraud. Christian and Hubert knew the abbey when it was still a prison. Uh, we first met upstairs in the catechism there at the back. All the children of the commune went there. She was the bursar's daughter. He was the warden's son. Their love story began behind these walls 53 years ago. Hello, how are you? Yes, I'm fine. And you? I'm fine. It's been a long time. Zoe, a guide at the abbey, will Stop. open the doors to their memories. Will you show us around again? And yes, we're going for a walk. Here we go. What we're going to do is go back down and we're going to go through the prison entrance. Do we do that? Christian and Hubert spent their childhood playing among the inmates. Well, no, no, sometimes I... In those days, every prisoner had a job. Hubert was fascinated by the hairdresser, a serial killer. He was always telling us stories as he combed our hair with the big razor. All the mischief he'd done and all the mischief he'd do if he got out, it brightened our ordinary lives, yes, because we had stories. Today, however, there's hardly a trace of the prison left. Everything was destroyed when the abbey closed to bring it back to life. Two remains have been kept, though. These are off limits to the public. The chicken cage room. A string of individual cells, each two meters square where homosexual inmates and child rapists were locked up to protect them from other prisoners. It's locked, isn't it? The key was there. We know it's a guy. They never left this room. So it's very small. And black marks in each one. It's apparently the mark of the prisoner's head who slept with his head against the wall. So this is the trace of the scalp. As children, Christian and Hubert didn't have access to these rooms. The chicken cages but also solitary confinement was off limits. You can go in now. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're going to stay here for the night. It'll do you good. No, I wouldn't want to stay here too long. There was just a small opening so we could talk when the door was closed like a pass-through. As my father used to describe it, uh, solitary confinement was really something. It was a box in which you were locked up and never saw the light of day. So we didn't imagine it with the stone, the doors like that, but we knew it was something terrible, hard, black, dark. Ah, yes, you have to bend over. You have to bend your back. The dark hours of prison are long gone. After the hotel and restaurant, Fontevraud Abbey will open in 2009, a museum of modern art with 600 works of art.